In this video, we're going to learn about pure virtual functions and abstract classes in C++. Pure virtual functions and abstract classes are helpful when we have a situation where we would like to have a base class and derive classes so that we can take advantage of benefits like polymorphism, but we can't provide an implementation of a function in the base class, maybe because it can't really exist. So for example, let's create a program to work with shapes. It would be nice if we could have an array of pointers to shape objects, where this array would be made up of pointers to object instances of derived classes of a more general shape base class. So for example, we could say new square five, and this would create a square object where the square has a side length of five. We could say new triangle eight, 10, and this would create a triangle object instance where the triangle has a base of eight and height of 10. We could also create a couple more square and triangle objects. So we'll say new square seven, and then we'll say new triangle three and four. Now that we've got this array of pointers to these shape objects, it would be nice if we could do something like create a loop to go through this array and call the area member function for each one of these object instances. Because even though they're different types of shapes, we know that all shapes can have an area calculated. Now the way it's calculated is gonna be different for a square compared to a triangle, but because they're shape objects, they should have an area member function that we can define. So we'll say this. We'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than four, i plus plus. And then we'll output shape, and then the number of the shape, and then we'll have a colon, and then we'll call the area member function for each shape that this array has a pointer to because really we should be able to make an area member function for square and triangle and really any other type of shape as well. The problem with this is there's no generic shape area. We can't really define an area member function for the shape base class that would actually make any kind of sense. If that's the case, would we ever really want to make a generic shape object? Probably not. Now we might want to have pointers to shape objects. So that way we can take advantage of polymorphism here. This here is allowing us to write less code than if we had to have separate arrays for squares and triangles and all the other types of shapes and then separate loops to go through each one of those arrays. It's awfully convenient to be able to have a general base class shape and to have these derived classes square and triangle. So we still want to have a base class that has this area member function that square and triangle can override and provide their own unique definition of. But we don't want to have an area member function that's actually implemented in the shape class itself. This is exactly the problem that pure virtual functions and abstract classes solve. So let's solve this problem using a pure virtual function. The first thing we'll do is make our classes square and triangle. We'll say class square colon public shape. So square is gonna be a derived class of shape and our square objects are gonna have a single public member variable side for the side length of the square. The constructor for our square objects is gonna set that side member variable to the argument provided. And the area member function is gonna calculate the area of a square to be the side length times the side length. And it's gonna return that value. We can also make a triangle class. We'll say class triangle. It's also going to be a derived class of shape. It's gonna have two public member variables, double base 
and double height for the base and height of the triangle. The constructor for triangle is going to accept two arguments, the base and the height. And then it's going to set the base member variable to the base argument provided and the height member variable to the height argument provided. And then the area member function for a triangle is going to calculate the area different. It's going to return one half the base times the height. Now we can make our shape base class. So we'll say class shape. And because of the way we've written this code with polymorphism in our main function here, our shape class needs to have an area member function. Otherwise, this won't work. This polymorphism here won't work. But we can't provide an actual implementation of area for shapes in general, because that's not a thing. It doesn't really exist. So here we'll say public, and then we'll say virtual double area is equal to zero. And this here is a pure virtual function. We could also call it a pure virtual member function. So the virtual keyword is gonna enable this dynamic binding of the area member function at runtime. So that as this program is running, which area member function, either squares area member function or triangles area member function, which one of those is called here is going to be determined at runtime. And that's because of the virtual keyword here. But this equals zero here is going to make this an abstract class. And it's going to make this here, a pure virtual function. So an abstract class is a class that has at least one pure virtual function. That's all it takes to be an abstract class. If you have one or more pure virtual functions, you become an abstract class. One thing about abstract classes is we can't actually create an instance of the abstract class. So I cannot make a shape object instance. We could try to do that. Down here, let's comment out this for now. And I'll try to make a shape object. I'll try to say shape, shape. If I save this and run it, we'll get an error. It says variable type shape is an abstract class. So again, shape is an abstract class because we have a pure virtual function here and we can't make an instance of an abstract class, but we can have pointers and references of the type of the abstract class. So for example, what we can do is this here. Here we have pointers to shape in this array. We don't have an instance of shape. We have pointers of the type shape. That's going to enable us to use polymorphism here, which is great for our code, but we don't actually have to define an area member function that doesn't actually make sense. If we save this and run it, we now get this output of each shape's area, even though we don't have an implementation of the area member function in the actual base class. And that's really the whole idea with pure virtual functions. Now, a couple other things about pure virtual functions. One, if the derived classes don't override the pure virtual functions, they will become abstract classes themselves. So for example, let's say here that square doesn't override area. So because square doesn't override all of the pure virtual functions of its base class, it becomes an abstract class as well. So if we save and run our program now, we'll get an error. It says allocating an object of abstract class type square. So any derived class 
that doesn't override all of the pure virtual functions of its base class will itself become an abstract class. So classes like square and triangle that do override all of the pure virtual functions of their base class, we can call these concrete classes because these are classes for which we actually can create object instances like this. One other thing about abstract classes is that we're not limited to only having pure virtual functions. We can have member variables, constructors, destructors, virtual member functions, and non-virtual member functions, just like any other class. But if they have one or more pure virtual functions, then they become an abstract class. So that's how pure virtual functions and abstract classes work in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.